Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa. Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa, listening. Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa. Clear. Welcome back to Back on Amateur Radio. I've been working with this TID Radio wireless programmer, which has actually been pretty cool in a lot of regards. Um, still working through some kinks, I think. The wireless programmer does work, and the app does work. And what's also cool is you can go into the back end after you've downloaded information from your radio into the app, you can go into the web browser on your computer and alter the, the channel data and whatever else. It's pretty cool that you can do that. You can also just create a new file on the web and upload it to your app which then you can upload into the radio. So it makes it possible, it makes it a lot easier. Um, now, it isn't Chirp. And Chirp has a lot of stuff right at your fingertips, and that makes it really easy to use Chirp. The H6, this radio, you can program with Chirp. So that's kind of nice. But regardless, having a Bluetooth wireless capability uh, to program from your smart device, your smartphone, and be able to do that offline because you can cache those libraries into your phone. That's kind of cool that you can do that. And that's really, really important depending on where you're going to be traveling in the backcountry or where you're going to be traveling where there might not be any cell phone signal where you can get information for repeaters and things like that. So planning ahead, you can create data libraries and upload them to your radio on the fly. So I'm going to show you how that works, and then we'll just do a function test with uh, the SDR and make sure that the signal is getting through. Now, the SDR is not intended to be a, a signal report for this radio, but I do have to say that the audio comes in pretty clear. Uh, there's some crackling here and there, but I'm not quite sure why that's happening. All right, let's dig into this. This radio comes with its own programming cable, which is another reason that it's such a great package for the money. You get the programming cable, you get two batteries, two antennas, and one of those is the 771, so it's a 15 inches, I think, and it's great to have uh, a good antenna with some length to it. Anyway, I opened up Chirp just to show that it could be done, but I wanted to use Chirp in order to read from the radio and then program in a couple more uh, frequencies to use on you know, a repeater and then a simplex. So... Some of it's going to look really familiar to all of you. The whole reason I'm doing this is just to show a couple couple nuances in the programming for this radio. The H6 is capable of frequency hopping, and I guess most of the Baofeng firmware radios are going to have this. But as you can see, or you will see here in a second, if you're programming in a new frequency, you're not going to be able to see that other tab up there in the programming or properties box here until you uh, save it and then open it back up. And I'll show you this, I think, on the next one. Anyhow, um, I just want to show that it can be done. Going through all these steps, it's not super important. Uh, there you go. The other tab is missing. And that's where you need to go in and make sure that the frequency hopping is off, the PTD, PTTID is off because usually it's programmed to both or what I found when I read from the radio especially with the uh, the Oddmaster app reading it from the radio with chirp it doesn't seem to do that anyway as you can see it's not there and you'll need to click save after you have all your settings or okay and then go back open it back up and then go back to other anyway I send this back to the radio because I'm ready to read it into the app on the phone. Unfortunately, I can't save the chirp file and upload it into the Oddmaster file on the web. That would be really convenient and really cool if we could do that. But this way, I can at least get this data ported over. And so that means GMRS data, uh, weather service data, all that stuff. If I want to program that from chirp and then upload it into the app, using the Bluetooth dongle, that's possible. So anyway, connected the radio to the app using the Bluetooth dongle or wireless programmer, 
and uploaded it into the app. And there, I just, I'm going to go into it and save it just so you can see that, you know, you, you do have to save it in order for it to save to the web. Um, pretty basic. You just go up here at the top right and you click save. After checking out a couple things, maybe make sure that it copied the way you want it to. At that point, then I'll go in and save it. And probably the most convenient way is to save a date. But for this test, I decided that what I wanted to do was save it under you know, a common ID, uh, file or this kind of concept that I'm just testing this. Anyway, doesn't matter. I saved it. Now it's time to open up the web browser. Unfortunately, the Oddmaster manual doesn't give the proper instructions for setting this up. You do have to go into the, the app, turn it on, and then go in to the oddmaster.net, and then you can log in. But you have to do this through a series of steps, and I'll post a video done by TID Radio on how to do that. That's why I'm not showing you how to do that here, because that video, uh, I think, does it very well, and there's no need for me to repeat that. So I'll put that in the link, or a link for that in the description below. Here you can see the program channels as they were programmed into Chirp and then into the radio and then uploaded from the radio through the Bluetooth app on the Oddmaster app on my uh, iPhone. This is pretty cool to be able to pull this up on a browser and check it out. This allows me also to edit these files. So this particular library or memory bank has just a few memories in there or channels. So I'm going to add one or two. And this one, I'm adding the 146.62 repeater, which has a negative offset and no tones. I also want to put the, the busy lock off, the frequency hopping off. And I don't know why, but I see a lot of, a lot of things defaulting to this when I import new data for, for a uh, repeater. So anyway, you hit save, and it takes back out to the, the library list. Now, I'm going to go back in here and show you there's, there's a few other things you can do. And that's kind of cool that you can go in and you can manipulate some of the other radio settings on the web tool, which is what I'm going to call this on the web or oddmaster.net web tool. And in this case, there's, there's so much more you can do than just set your frequencies on your channel plan and manipulate your, your library and add library uh, database. So if you want to uh, change you know, the frequency that the radio turns on to on VFO, then you can change that to so the FM radio. Anyway, all of that being said, there's a lot to explore here and there's a lot to learn. But for those of us who use Chirp or use these, this style Baofeng, firmware before, a lot of this will look very familiar. So you might have to give it a sec, and then the data will import over um, into the app. So there it is, today, August 16th, that was the file, and I'm just going to go through my settings and make sure that the revisions look the way they're supposed to, and that they're there, uh, because I did initially upload this from the radio into the app. So I'm going to go ahead and write because the revisions are there, this 146.62. And you know that's going to be a fun one to test. That is a very widely used repeater here. Uh, but I probably won't show that on because it's such a busy repeater. Anyway, I am going to test this using the SDR. Now, don't be concerned about the audio quality. What we're looking for is connectivity. Did this work? Here's Simplex. Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa. Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa listening. Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa, clear. KI7 WJB, Kilo India 7, Whiskey Julia Papa, monitoring. Not quite sure what that crackling was in that last sample, but whatever. The proof is the settings work, and the, the radio does obviously a good job, and I think it sounds clear. There's no muffling. So anyway, the crackling is probably from some kind of um, interference. At any rate, 
my conclusions here are that the Oddmaster app works and it works well with that web tool. That you put the settings in and they transfer. That's important. It does what it says it's supposed to do. And I think it's also a really good idea to verify your settings in the radio after you've uh, uploaded that into the radio. It's important that we check our work. At any rate, the Bluetooth wireless programmer is really portable. It's just tiny, but if you're using it a lot, again, you might want to have a way to charge that in the field. Thank you for joining me today, and I hope that it's been informative and answered some questions about this programmer. If you like this, please give it a thumbs up. Please you know, check out their store on, on Amazon. I put a link for these two, the radio and the programmer, in the description below. Um, there's just it's kind of cool. And I think if you're a beginner, this radio package, the H6, is a lot better than buying a UV5R because it comes with so many things that can take you so much further. All right. Stay safe out there, and we'll catch you on the next one.